Like, I mean, I've never done a gig like this before. It's pretty weird. Um, I guess I gotta comb my hair. <laughs> All the songs I wrote have uh, never been performed live. Haven't even been fully written yet, so uh, we'll see how that goes. I don't know, I'm not like freaking out. Uh, it's not got my 110% behind it, you know, like, I've just been busy with other shit, you know, dreams getting crushed a bit by, uh, crunch time, third year engineering and bullshit. I'm not going to be an engineer when I graduate. That's, that's definitely not what's supposed to happen, which is kind of making me wonder why I'm doing anything because I'm doing an engineering degree so like you know the classic routine would be get an engineering degree and become an engineer but I'm not like that I'm a maverick I look like a fucking dickhead I'm gonna go get an engineering degree, and it's gonna be everyone's gonna be like, "Yo, he did it! He did an engineering degree. That's so weird. He's like a, he's like the dumbest guy I know. I bet he plays twenty thousand blunts the way he talks." And then, and I'm like, "Oh shit, I can do math." And they're like, "Fuck, you know what a Fourier transform is?" I'm like, "Hell yes, yeah, son. It's blunt." <laughs> and then like, yeah, it's my accomplishment of a lifetime. Just get an engineering degree and rest on my laurels after that. It felt really weird to be playing. I kind of had a very strong urge of like not wanting to be there. I think that was like the worst gig I've ever done. in your living room it's so much more relaxed like just like no pressure oh a little fuck up oh I'm still shredding but then like you go on stage you fuck up you're like fuck everyone hates me and they know that I'm not a good musician I hate my life I don't want to just like it's just so much like oh I was just like fuck like I just had this intense realization that like oh no nah. I keep thinking like oh I'm doing engineering but I'm doing it with I'm studying electronics with music so I'm still studying music I'm still being musical and this was a very harsh, under the spotlight reminder that if you stop practicing music, you're gonna get pretty like shit at it. Is Axel? Trying to get my shit together. You about to hear some mad, dank little uh, 90s, 2000s R&B type bullshit for like two hours. It's gonna be sick. Uh, shout out to Nick Smith. Happy birthday, B-boy. Um, fucking carrying multiple uh, 
technical challenges right now, but uh, once I'm done with that, you'll get on with the suaveness. You'll have a very lovely Sunday evening. Session your way into my B day on Monday. Turn up. What? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know, it's Axel making a dog's breakfast of a mix. But uh, hopefully, uh, there's still. Uh, oh, hopefully, there's somebody out there <laughs> listening to them. Listen to me. <laughs> I find like the present is always like the least pleasant to look at. The ple present's the least pleasant. Because like, you're, you know, you're like, this doesn't feel good. But this is gonna be great in the future, and it comes and you're like, oh, this doesn't feel good. And you're back and you're like, oh, that was actually great. So it's only the present that's actually shit. It's a blessing and a curse. So, what do you think about this, people who say, live in the present? That's the worst idea. Don't do that. Okay, I've had my fun. I'm gonna go home soon. Or will I? Will I go on a massive bender until it hits 12 because I'm about to turn 21? Yow! My name's Axel Steinman. Hit me up on Facebook. Finna trying to party tonight. <laughs> oh, dude. Night night. Sweet dreams. I love you. When I turn 21, I'm just gonna be fucking shit up. I'm gonna be going to the gym. I'm gonna be getting swole for all the broke hoes. I'm gonna run through them like fucking fire runs through wood. I'm gonna be fucking, you, know, you already know, man. I'm gonna be making the dankest tracks. People are gonna recognize. 21, when I'm 21, I'm gonna catch wreck. I feel like this whole documentary might just blow my whole cover wide open. I like thinking and working in ways that people don't understand and I come through and I'm like, uh, and then people are like, uh, whereas if they just know exactly what I'm about and how I take, I can't. A lot of, my, a lot of what I take joy in doing is just provoking reactions from people, like strong reactions, strong positive reactions. Or negative, you know, just reaction. We gotta go. We gotta go. Do I want to be famous? Within limits, yas. Like, I really don't want to become, I don't know. I guess there's, there's pros and cons to it. I wouldn't want to be like dumb famous, you know? I wouldn't want to have like Kim Kardashian have some fucking TV show about me and like how fucking everything I do. Like, cause like people like that, you just have dumb power and influence. And like, I feel like I wouldn't really want to be like such an influential person. Like Cristiano Ronaldo can't do like shit you know, you're so under the public thumb, especially with the internet now, like one bad tweet and like your career is just leveled and everyone hates you and they're like, why would you do that? You're fucking supposed to be a role model to people. I want to be famous in the sense that I want to be able to make money off of my music and actually like catch wreck for the music kind of so I can, you know, 
I do like survive off that and like, yeah. Yeah, just be able to make music for a living, that, that's like the dream, isn't it? Just like, not have to work a regular job, just be able to freelance through life. At the same time, I'm a bit like retarded at like making life choices and like kind of maybe fuck being famous. So like, yeah. The modern condition, you know, I'm a millennial kid. I'm treated like royalty by fucking everyone. So I just want to like, you know, represent that straight lorden in like some really comfy clothes, but like. Not some like old school ass, funky ass. Like, you know. Don't want to be dressed in some played out shit. I want to like create some new aesthetics. Like, you know, like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to jump on no bandwagons. I don't want to like dress really vaporwave or anything. I just want to dress like me. And yeah. And that's, yeah, I guess what I am is like lazy and lording, a little bit bowler, a little bit vain, a little bit comfy, a little bit, uh, a little bit cute, a little bit, you know, treat myself well. Come and climb boxes just to make my balls like hang nice and comfy. What is my aesthetic? I guess just really lazy and comfortable and like hot <laughs> is what I'm trying to go for. I definitely have a brand. I'd say I'm definitely some, uh, is, I'm, I'm a airtight fairy dude with nothing to lose kind of attitude. And uh, it's just got that kind of air to it that I have myself of kind of, you know, being a pretty uh, <laughs> trippy guy. I don't know. It's just, it's just all my influences and shit coming together into one uh, sauce of just like half the time just being like mad, uh, psychopathically romantic almost. But like also just like, just like a white, privileged male with uh, nothing to really care about and no uh, real problems, just living a happy life. So, so half of it's just like carefree euphoria and the other half is like carefree or, or careless whispers, more to say. I made a song just now, feeling totes in mosh. And uh, so we're gonna finish it and we're gonna make a film music video. My name's Axel. That, is, that all, is that all you want to know? Say when. Cap backwards or forwards? Cap backwards or forwards? Or no cap? Alright. Huh? Alright. Okay, let me know. Gehen ab wie Gomez, der Gestalt Jedes Moment mit dir bin ich steil Du bist scharf, ich bin high Meine Liebe, Liebe noch gebaut We're going a little to pick up some plants for the living room in my room. I'm trying to fang the fuck out of my shui. So we're standing outside little. We're gonna go get some plants. Something like these ones. They look like these ones. But uh, I think these make edible foods. We're gonna go in and get some decorative plants for the house. Orchids. Orchids. Orchids, shorkids. He sells shores by the sea, shorkids. Are you kidding me? Oh, 
Oh my god. But they're not as leafy as I'm imagining these are going to be. I <laughs> gotta get like the two holes so for your nostrils. Mmm. <laughs> smells like plastic. I can't smell it at all. Have you smelled these before? Like, do they smell good? I've got a bonsai in my room and a rhododendron and a little plant, little flower. Wow, a little flower, a little yeah. flower. It's good to have like life and it just, you know, brightens your day a little bit. It does. I wake up and I look at the bonsai and I think, man. Bonsai. Bonsai! <laughs> and I karate chop my way out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the sort of kid that he's he has antennas out the whole time in every direction so he's interested in everything he's wondrous about everything but it's hard to find a way to get through that to focus on one thing because he's interested in 10 things so it's it's hard to like put all that stuff away later and then focus on one. So it worries me. I worry about him because I think maybe he could, he's, he could get lost down a path that he doesn't really want to be in. And then he turns around and it's just like, well, how did I get here? That worries me. I remember uh, this, is, this is something about his character which I am so proud of him for. There was when he was about nine, Eight or nine, he was riding around on a push bike in Wolfratshausen with, um, what's his name, the guy that shot you? Oh, Kayvon. Uh, Kayvon. And uh, all the local lads. And they were riding around on their bikes and stuff. And these big bully guys came along and um, they rammed one of the kids and he fell off his bike and broke his arm. So it was a serious thing. And everybody just pissed off. They just disappeared everywhere. Except Axel. Axel was the only one that stayed with him and and because he was really hurt. He was he broke his arm. It was bad. Yeah, in two places. Yeah, and he stayed with him and took him until he got back to his house. And I just thought, that's really honourable thing. And that's the sort of guy he is. So Kayvon died. Who's that? Kayvon... My friend from high school, he went schizophrenic as soon as he graduated and then uh, he's just been on a rocky road since then and then he died. He fell or jumped from a height and then went and died. And that's just, that's just made my day really weird. Because you always have that inherent wisdom that like, you don't need to go to uni, you don't need to do what everyone fucking tells you to. Yeah, especially now that he's dead, it's kind of like sunk in like, definitely just do whatever the fuck you want to do, like that's such a good idea. You know what I mean? Like... Mm. Yeah, he just had such a hustler mentality and like, it's pretty inspiring. It's like the thought about that has tempted me to like think about like wanting to like drop out or whatever and just like do as he does but in a more coherent manner. But I guess uni degrees is a safety net and it's costing not too much money to go get it. And I'm doing a lot of growing up in the process. But once I'm out of here, dude, definitely taking a lot of pages out of Kayvon's book. Because he's like, you know, he knew what he wanted. I'm what like, do you want? Well, I don't know what I want. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck I would do with my life if I didn't have music. Like, there's so many times when it's just been like, just got mad emotion. And you're like, what the fuck am I gonna like? Am I supposed to sit here and like, you know, you got something to do. It's like, I guess it's a way to sort of distract yourself from what's going on, and, like process it and create something beautiful to sort of forget about whatever you're doing, like whatever else. I feel like, yeah. Just something to keep yourself uh, occupied. And uh, 
you know, to create something that addresses directly emotions. Like, music is completely based on emotion. So I guess, like, making music, it's almost masturbatory in that it gives me the emotions that I want to then feel or like that's portrayed by me it's like an echo chamber you know it's like what's in my mind it's literally like i'll like be in the shower and just like some sounds will just enter my mind and i'll just be like that like that's something my soul has just like said to me like in the form of that and then i'll just like try and make it some of the time so other times i'll just fuck around and then come up with some crazy shit and be like, oh damn <laughs> I could just plug, we could just solo that guitar track, we could just run it through, or I could just double track it. And we just have like a thing guitar and a dirty guitar, and it just sound a bit more full. Yeah. Yeah, it comes straight from my brain, so it's like completely me. And it's weird to just have something that you can show people that's like, this is just like me. It's still on my mind, it's still this big thing that's like there, but I I feel like, yeah, I don't know. It's just gonna, it's just gonna be there, it's death. Like, what are you gonna do about it? Nothing, like, it's just gonna slowly trickle away at me. It's like a big bowl of sand that's just in the shower and like occasionally clumps will just like drip out as the water falls on it. And like, there's like a slow stream of it just always kind of being there. And then, you know, time will fade it away. And then I'll be less sad about this death. Mom was over, right? Mm -hmm. you know, we were having an interview with her. Yeah, we were interviewing. But you were like as a child and other stuff. Yeah. And then at the end of it, she asked you a question about how you felt about your parents splitting up. Mm. And I've seen the footage, and to me, it looked like you were trying to avoid the question. All you've ever known growing up has been pretty much Starnberg or Wolfratshausen is Starnberg and your mum and dad. Yeah. And now when you go home, Starnberg is still there, but dad's there, but I'm not there. Hmm. And Barbara's there. Yeah. And I'm somewhere else. Yeah. And when you come to visit me, I'm with Jamo. And that must be like, how is that for you? Are you cool with all that? Yeah, totally. Like, I mean, I guess in a way it's kind of fitting to like the whole Glasgow thing and that it's like, like in Glasgow there's just been such an influx of like new people in my life. I'm like, okay, getting to know all these people that, you know, they just stick on to you. Like, you know, you had a Facebook friend. It takes a lot to delete a friend. It's so easy to accept an invitation. And, uh, you know, the people just stick to you like uh, Velcro unless you really peel them off one by one, you just get loads and uh... Yeah, but, but we're not, I'm not talking about Facebook friends. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about, this is your foundation. Yeah, no, that's so true. Um, nearly dug myself into a hole there. Um, yeah, you're gonna peel me off like Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, it was... Uh... Yeah, for the first like six months I was like, kind of fucked up about it, I think, maybe a little bit. I mean, it's, I guess it's nice to have parents that are like, together and it's like a normal fucking family, but like, like it, seemed, it seemed like a happy family for a while, but it's like, like if that's what a happy family looks like, I don't know if that's, maybe it was all fucked up and I never knew what like it was like to be like in a family that loved each other, but like, that's what I thought, like, you know, that's my perception, like that's how you learn 
like love and how to love people. So uh, I respect her that she made that call because that was a really hard call to make and that was her call. And like, if shit was fucked up, because apparently shit was fucked up for a while and like, like, she had to do it because like dad wouldn't admit to himself that it was like fucked up because he would want to hold together just for the sake of family. I'm sorry, dude.